I'm Diana, and I'm Batgirl. Batgirl, 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 Batgirl. Today we're going to talk about treatment. So treatment for degenerative disc disease, um, there are so many treatments out there for anything and everything. With degenerative disc disease, you are dealing with a couple different things. You're dealing with... Um, on a skeletal structural level, the, the vertebra may be um, shifting, the discs may be sh shifted, ruptured, or herniated. Um, you're dealing with uh, on a nerve level because with that shifting, it could be compressing the discs um, and then compressing the nerves, and that's causing nerve pain. And that nerve pain is then triggering, of course, muscular spasms. So you have a muscle pain, you have nerve pain, and you have maybe some structural pain. When working with any kind of treatment for degenerative disc disease, most of the treatments out there are to treat the symptoms. Um, as far as I know, there's no cure for degenerative disc disease. Sometimes treatments work so well to mask or get rid of the symptoms, you never have an issue again. And for some of us, those treatments are just stop gaps along the way. Um, and for me, the treatments I've done have all been preventative measures to kind of stop getting a surgery. Um, but in the long run for me, it's always included a surgery. However, this spinal fusion that I just got, it, I mean, I'm retiring from surgery. <laughs> like this is it. Um, spinal fusions are the end game. Uh, you, you get that when there are no other options. So I had three laminectomy disectomies and then I had a spinal fusion and that was, you know, 15 years of, of avoiding that fusion after I started having symptoms. So this is so big. treatment breaks down to three different things. You can use uh, pharma or painkillers to treat muscle or nerve pain. You can treat it with uh, physical manipulation, which is chiropractic or massage or uh, staying active and stretching consistently or swimming, yoga, that kind of stuff. Um, or bracing, which is the structural, you can wear the back braces um, or leg braces or everything that you need to kind of keep the spine in, you know, in a more secure way to stop the pain or the other symptoms that are occurring, like the nerve numbness or the muscle weakness, uh, which all come part of the degenerative disc disease. For me, um, I've tried a lot of different things. I've done chiropractor. I've done acupuncture. I've done uh, traction, physical therapy. I've worked with a personal trainer uh, for a couple of years. I was trying to keep that up. But the issue for me being active uh, is also being mindful that you don't overdo it um, because you can cause the symptoms to come back pretty quickly. And then you're not able to move as much, which is silly. Whether you use uh, pharma uh, or painkillers, um, muscular treatments, um, or structural stuff. You just want to be mindful that you're doing everything you can to kind of get rid of that pain. Um, for me, when I'm in like the death spiral pain, I immediately go for my hot pack. I put it on my back. I get my TENS unit, which is STEM. Uh, they use it in physical therapy. Little electrodes go right on your back. You put it on. I put the hot pack on top of it. And then I start with the other part that's really going to help you with your pain management, and it's your mind. The faster you can relax your mind, the quicker you can get out of pain. The biggest part of having degenerative disc disease is that you are a chronic pain sufferer. Whether it's for months at a time, weeks at a time, or just for a few days. When you have a bad back, um, you have chronic pain. Uh, and dealing with that is doing the best you can to avoid it. Chronic pain changes you. It changes your behavior and your attitudes towards things. It may make you more irritable, more stressed. Um, but it also changes you at a cellular level, uh, which I didn't know until I went to a chronic pain uh, support group in Boston. And there are these sodium channels in your spine at a cellular level, and the, the channels will change. The landscape of your cells change when you deal with pain on a daily basis. Um, and in the sense that once you do become a chronic pain sufferer, um, you do tend to become more sensitive to pain in the sense that the moment that pain signal comes out, your your body just decides it's going to stay forever. So you better prepare for it and like you react to it. 
So having a high pain threshold is great, but when you become a chronic pain sufferer, it, it changes you. And um, I think what I, what I want to say is that I, I'm not going to give you an award for being the strongest and the most badass and you're able to take on all of that pain. In fact, I don't know many people that are going to be like, you're in so much pain, you need an award. Like, it, it doesn't happen. Um, it's really important to take care of yourself and your pain. I can tell you, dealing with degenerative disc disease for the last 15 years, I didn't always do that. In fact, most of the time I wanted to ignore the crap out of it and just be like, you know, I'm just going to power through it. Like, my friends would be like, oh, you look like you're in pain, you're dancing, doing salsa. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'm not in pain. Like, I was such a badass that I'd be like, I don't even need painkillers. I'm just going to power through this. Um, but in the end, I'm just screwing myself. Like, I'm just, I'm... I'm basically inviting the pain to stay longer. Please, please pain, please stay in my body longer. Uh, it is better and it is in your best efforts to do whatever you need to do to be comfortable, to relax the body, relax the mind, and get the pain out of your body as soon as possible. Pain comes in waves, so just go through those waves and wait until it resides. If you power through it, the pain's just gonna stay longer. If you injure yourself and you go back to work too fast, the pain and the injury stays longer. It's the exact same thing with degenerative disc disease. The more you ignore it, the longer it's going to take for you to heal. So take that time, relax, baby the crap out of yourself, make your partner bring you everything, make your family, train your dog, or for me, I train my cat to, to bring me you know anything I need to be good. So things that really helped me. My TENS unit, the STEM, um, I have my own personal STEM machine um, that I put on their little electrodes. Um, I don't use a lot of pharmaceutical stuff uh, just because for me it just masks it. Uh, the, if I do have to use painkillers, I'll use ibuprofen um, or aspirin or at this point because of am um, still coming off of recovery from the fusion and I'm on a couple other things. I can only take Tylenol, which is fine. And... Uh, Massage therapy was huge for me. I love that crap. Um, I swim every day, which is really important. Keeping active. Um, going to the chronic pain groups. I'm not kidding. I mean, it depends on your group. But I have found them really informative and really helpful to talk about it. Um, because chronic pain, it, again, changes you. Here and here and <laughs> here. <laughs> Not I'm gesturing I'm to all of you. Like, you want to take care of all of it. Um, so, epidurals didn't work for me. For the pharma stuff, I'll take ibuprofen, aspirin, or Tylenol. Um, or leave was good for a while, too. Um, the nerve pain thing is a big stuff, big thing. So, I actually used Elevil. Traditionally, for the last, like, 70 years, it's been used for an antidepressant. Um, but in very, very small doses, it relieves nerve pain. So I took 25 milligrams of Elevil at night when I was in, like, the acute phases with the pain just to help me sleep. Um, and within a week or two, it really started to help. Um, so that's all I have to say about treatments. You want to be mindful that you're dealing with structural, so whether you need a back brace, um or you need a hot pack or cold pack to calm your muscles, or to relieve nerve pain. Um, it all kind of is together. So if you treat it together where you use your mind to relax everything and you understand how chronic pain works, uh, and you use all of your kind of tools with the heat pack and the cold pack and massage therapy or physical therapy or swimming or, or whatever you need to do to kind of keep your body moving, through the pain and, and taking time to deal with it, um, you're going to be okay. And that's the biggest thing about degenerative disc disease is that, you know, it, it's about managing the disease because there isn't a cure, um, as much as I wish there was one. But you and me, we're right here together. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, and I've had this fusion now for four months, and I, I don't think it's going to cure me. But I think it's going to really help. And um, I definitely can move my foot back and forth now, which is good. Not as like high as I'd like, but I can drive again. Um, I got my life back. And I went camping this past weekend with like all of my friends. 
and I had a fantastic time. Uh, of course, the unsteady ground wasn't super easy for me to navigate, but um, I just want you to know that post-fusion, life is good. I mean, it sucks. There's a couple factors that suck really bad right now, and I'll get into that maybe. Maybe. We'll see. But the next video will be about coping mechanisms and uh, what are some things that I've used before. Or, do you see the hat? You see the hat, right? I'm telling you, it's important. And it, it's just fun. The next video we'll talk about how to take care of yourself and, and in the coping mechanisms, what are some things that are good and healthy to use to kind of get through living with this disease, or at least what I've used to live through this disease. So, I'm Batgirl, and I'm signing off.